the Battle of Sedgemoor was fought on 6 July 1685 and took place at Western Zoyland near Bridgewater in Somerset, England. It was the final battle of the Monmouth Rebellion and followed a series of skirmishes around southwest England between the forces of James Scott. First Duke of Monmouth and troops loyal to James II. Victory went to the Royalists and about 500 prisoners fell into their hands. Monmouth escaped from the battlefield but was later captured and taken to London for trial and execution. Many of Monmouth's supporters were tried during the bloody assizes. Many were transported abroad, while others were executed by drawing and quartering. Background it was the final battle of the Monmouth Rebellion between the troops of the rebel James Scott, first Duke of Monmouth who was attempting to seize the English throne from his uncle James II of England. James II had succeeded to the throne on the death of his brother Charles II. On 2 February 1685, James Scott was Charles's illegitimate son. Eventually Monmouth's poorly equipped army was pushed back to the Somerset levels, becoming hemmed in at Bridgewater on 3 July, and ordered his troops to fortify the town. The force was made up of around 3,500, mostly nonconformist, artisans and farmer workers armed with farm tools. The Royalist troops led by Louis de Doras, 2nd Earl of Feversham and Colonel John Churchill were camped behind the Bussex Rhine at Western Zoyland. The infantry forces included 500 men of the 1st Regiment of Foot. Two battalions of the 1st or King's Royal Regiment of Guards led by Henri Fitzroy, 1st Duke of Grafton, 600 men of the 2nd Regiment of Guards and five companies of the Queen Consort's Regiment. The horse and foot, the royal train of artillery was camped along the road to Bridgewater. The Royal Cavalry, with seven troops, 420 men of the Earl of Oxford's, the King's Regiment of Horse, the King's own Royal Dragoons and three troops of the King's Horse Guards made up the army. The battle. The Duke eventually led his untrained and ill-equipped troops out of Bridgewater at around 10 p.m. to undertake a nighttime attack on the King's army. They were guided by Richard Godfrey, the servant of a local farmer, along the old Bristol Road towards Bordrip. With their limited cavalry in the vanguard they turned south along Bradney Lane and Marsh Lane, and came to the open moor with its deep and dangerous rhinus. There was a delay while the Rhine was crossed and the first men across startled a royalist patrol. A shot was fired and the horsemen from the patrol galloped off to report to Feversham. The superior training of the regular army and their horses routed the rebel forces by outflanking them. Capture and aftermath Monmouth escaped the battlefield with Grey and headed for the southern coast, disguised as peasants. They were captured near Ringwood, Hampshire. He was taken to the Tower of London, where he was, after several blows of the axe, beheaded. A letter written by the first Earl of Shaftesbury in 1787 provides more detail as to Monmouth's capture. The tradition of the neighbourhood is this, viz. That after the defeat of the Duke of Monmouth at Sedgemoor, near Bridgewater, he rode, accompanied by Lord Grey, to Woody Yates where they quitted their horses, and the Duke having changed clothes with a peasant, endeavoured to make his way across the country to Christchurch. Being closely pursued, he made for the island, and concealed himself in a ditch which was overgrown with fern and underwood. When his pursuers came up, an old woman gave information of his being in the island, and of her having seen him filling his pocket with peas. The island was immediately surrounded by soldiers, who passed the night there, and threatened to fire the neighbouring cots. As they were going away, one of them espied the skirt of the Duke's coat, and seized him. The soldier no sooner knew him, than he burst into tears, and reproached himself for the unhappy discovery. The ash tree is still standing under which the Duke was apprehended, and is marked with the initials of many of his friends who afterwards visited the spot. The family of the woman who betrayed him were ever after holden in the greatest detestation, and are said to have fallen into decay, and to have never thriven afterwards. The house where she lived, which overlooked the spot, has since fallen down. It was with the greatest difficulty that any one could be made to inhabit it. 
After the battle about 500 of Monmouth's troops were captured and imprisoned in St. Mary's Parish Church in Western Zoyland, while others were hunted and shot in the ditches where they were hiding. More were hung from gibbets erected along the roadside. The Royalist troops were rewarded with Feversham being made a Knight of the Garter. Churchill promoted to Major General and Henry Shires of the artillery receiving a knighthood. Other soldiers, particularly those that had been wounded, received allowances ranging from £5 to £80. Some of the wounded were amongst the first to be treated at the newly opened Royal Hospital Chelsea. The King sent Lord Chief Justice Jeffreys to round up the Duke's supporters throughout the southwest and try them in the bloody assizes at Taunton Castle and elsewhere. About 1,300 people were found guilty, many being transported abroad, while some were executed by drawing and quartering. Daniel Defoe, who would later write the novel Robinson Crusoe, had taken part in the uprising and battle. He was heavily fined by Jeffreys, losing much of his land and wealth. Two brothers, Benjamin Hewling, a commander of a troop of horse, and William Hewling, lieutenant of foot, were among those condemned to death. Benjamin Hewling was hanged rather than drawn and quartered following a payment of £1,000 by his sister. James II was overthrown in a coup d'acute T.A.T. three years later, in the Glorious Revolution. The Battle of Sedgemoor is often referred to as the last battle fought on English soil, but this depends on the definition of battle, for which there are different interpretations. Other contenders for the title of last English battle include the Battle of Preston in Lancashire, which was fought on 14 November 1715. During the First Jacobite Rebellion, the Second Jacobite Rebellion's Clifton Moor skirmish, near Penrith, Cumberland, on 18 December 1745, and the skirmish known as the Battle of Graveney Marsh in Kent on 27 September 1940. The Battle of Culloden fought on Drummossie Moor to the northeast of Inverness on 16 April 1746 was the last pitched battle fought on British soil.